Hi everyone, welcome to What the F is Going On in Latin America, Code Pink's weekly program of hot news out of Latin America and the Caribbean. We broadcast on Code Pink YouTube every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. I'm your host, Terry Matson. This week, we will be discussing the Mexican Senate support of the referendum to judge five former presidents and the national petition drive leading up to this decision. Our guest is Mexican independent journalist, Alina Duarte. You can catch her on Sin Censura and follow her on Twitter, at Alina Duarte underscore. Welcome, Alina. Thanks for having me today. <laughs> and this is like, so for our viewers, I have to say this is a particularly um, enjoyable interview. We are broadcasting um, today from Mexico City. So where yeah. Alina lives and I'm visiting. So this is a really unique and wonderful opportunity for us yeah. to sit down and talk this face to face like this. So this is a little different format for all of you to, to watch. Yeah. So, so let's talk about what happened last week with the, with the Mexican Senate and what uh, maybe you can give us a, a quick breakdown on what happened in the Senate. And then let's talk about what led up to basically almost kind of forcing them to make that decision. Yeah, okay, so the latest is that the Mexican Senate decided to approve this petition of judging the former presidents and in general, uh, like every single polit politician uh, who has been going through corruption or something else. Uh, the Senate said like, yes, we need to put this demand on the public stage. We need to talk about it, we need to discuss it, and they decided for, it was a majority, and as you say, there was a whole process behind it. These were, uh, I mean, this is, my, I'm always insisting that this is about popular resistance, this is about popular power, this is something really new in Mexico, especially during the last two years with, with this government of Andres Manuel López Obrador, and we decided to to make a whole movement to do this uh to put in jail the former presidents to start with the former presidents and who makes a, who comprises the movement yeah well first this was a petition made uh, to the senate in um late uh, august by omar garcia who is a survivor uh, of ayotzinapa this massacre occurred in 2014 and also ariat navaena who's a student who has been displaced for his, in, from Guerrero, that it's a very complicated state here in Mexico after the so-called uh, war on drugs starting in 2006. So they both decided to put this initiative in the Senate saying we need to discuss, we need to, we want to put in jail former president because of, all, because of uh, all the violence that they were, they started actually this neoliberal government, so they decided to go to the Senate, they presented this initiative, and the Senate said like, yeah, okay, but you need more, almost uh, 2,000 million signatures to make a public consult, and we started to do this campaign, and we had only 15 days to collect <laughs> more, <laughs> yeah, almost 2,000 signatures. Right before, right? after I got arrived here. It was amazing what you accomplished. Yeah, I was, I was really happy because for the last two, two years, people here, I think most of them, well, we need to say that AMLO has 60, more than 60% of approval here in Mexico. So for two years, for the last two years, people have been just waiting for a call or for something. They haven't been organized uh, until since the elections in 2018. So that's why they decided to participate. That's my impression that even with the pandemic here, they decided to go and give us their signatures and we collected more than 2.5 million signatures in just two weeks. Throughout the country. Yeah. So just for our, for our viewers, um, regarding Omar and Adriana, they come from the state of Guerrero and um, Omar um, was on one of the buses September 26, 2014 in Ayotzinapa. Um, and this was the situation where the, the normalistas, the, student, the students who were uh, training to become teachers, uh, were disappeared, 43 of them. And he is actually, was in one of the buses that was not hijacked. 
but that crime has never been pro prosecuted, resolved, nothing. And so he's, yeah, he's a really significant person to be pushing. Yeah, I mean, that's why, that's why I think people just decided to participate because there was no doubt, any doubt about the importance of who they, they were, who they were, like Omar and Ariadna. It was a really uh, legitimate voice. They were like the yeah. representation of what happened for a lot 20 years at least, or with the war on drugs, so called, that it's just a civil war that has been going on here in Mexico since 2012. And they decided to participate and they said, like, there are so many crimes to be judged, so let's start this campaign. And people just decided to participate. They started and, with the presidents. Yeah, <laughs> started and, with yeah, the top, yeah, you know, five, five of them. Five of yeah. them. And, you know, like, people are really sick. Uh, even when we are young, we've been. We are now the, like, we have memory. We, we remember my whole life, I mean, just listening about massacres, uh, yeah. about reforms and neoliberal reforms. We've been, you know, we are just like the consequence of all of those governments. So that's why most of the people who were collecting uh, uh, signatures were mostly young people. Uh, and it was amazing. Uh, people responded like easily, even when we didn't have a real platform as the oligarchy has in this country country we just had our you know like our own resources just yeah. table just uh, kind of basic issues and things but i think what you saw is there was there's so many there is a lot of ground support for the president to go in a progressive direction and it, and i think one of the things you shared with me was what in when you were doing this patrician drive we said you saw a real you saw a real generational definition of progressivism older people people my age <laughs> who never thought they would ever see someone like amo in office think the government's fairly progressive now and are fairly happy with it younger people your elena's generation and those of you her age and younger feel the government's not progressive enough yeah. And I think that has a lot to do with just, you know, since the day you were born, you've seen nothing but violence, whether, and it's kind of like the states where you have two parties and one slightly to the right, slightly to the left, but they basically just shift. And you need something yeah. more than that. And I'm really afraid that this government, we don't push it. If we don't push this government really to the left, there are going to be more opportunities for the youngest people, for, the, for my age, to become reactionary as they do yeah. in Venezuela, in Cuba, yeah. you know, it's mm -hmm. something I'm really afraid, I'm really scared mm -hmm. because now that I see is, as I told you, people like, for example, my mom, my dad, my grandma, they're so happy with this government after yeah. being part of these neoliberal, but also these dictatorships that they weren't called like that in Mexico. So after the 80, after the 60s, the 80s, after the fraud in 80, 88 here in this country, in 2006 with AMLO and Felipe Calderon, after all of those issues, of course they think that this is the most progressive government that we can have, and it's not, it is not, it's not a feminist government also. It's, I mean, I'm not trying to say this is not a progressive government, this is it's the best. It's more progressive than you've had so far. Yeah, of course, the last government that we had like this was in 19. 1980, like in the 40s, mid, mm -hmm. mid 40s with Lazaro Cárdenas, that it was a nationalist progressive government. And I think it's something like this, but now the, the situation in the, in the region, it's, I think we need more, you know, and this is opportunity. So there is a legitimate movement in the streets, a feminist movement, a young people, young student movement, and they're just looking for more with us, with, with AMLO. So I'm really scared that this dog, this government doesn't move to the left and they they can be co-opted for from the like the far right movement and these people who now are in front of the national policy. Well let's talk maybe. about the far right movement. But there's a couple of things I'm thinking now simultaneously yeah. <laughs> as one, you know, with um, as far as you know the, the, the prior governments you've seen, and one of the things that um, the president said when he was inaugurated is that you know, the country is, the current situation in the country is the result of 30 years of neoliberalism. Yeah. And, um, and that's a lot of what the progressivism is pushing back again. And I think it's fascinating that 
that the support is on the ground for him to become more progressive, yeah. but it's not as quite organized yet. But you saw in this petition drive how much energy was there and that people readily showed up to sign that petition to prosecute the prior president. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what the conservative, the right wing people are doing. And this is a fascinating, I don't know for our viewers if you've been reading or seeing anything about Frena, F-R-E-N-A, like break. And uh, this is hard right. They are making their political statement against progressivism um, in the Sokolo by um, pitching tents. They're not sleeping in these tents overnight, by the way, but they are coming from all over the country to pitch a tent in the Sokolo as a symbolic statement against progressivism for fear of going towards the direction of Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua, I think is their narrative. And every yeah. week there's more and more tents there. So the, their message is growing at least among themselves. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the same as we've seen so many times with the Venezuelan opposition. Sometimes I really have kind of flashbacks, you know, <laughs> of their speeches, what they're saying against socialism, communism, that one, we're, one day we're going to become like Venezuela here in Mexico. They're saying all the, all the time the same things, that the Venezuelan opposition or the fascists in Bolivia or the, the squalids, the... the, the the gusanos in, in Cuba, you know, all of them have the same speech. Uh, and I wasn't really, I, I mean, I've been afraid in like a lot of time, no, it is not something new, but I'm really scared about how people here are really confident in the, that they are majority in the Congress, that they now are in presidency with AMLO, that they, they know that AMLO has enough support for like the, these reactionary movement, they don't have any opportunity to to win elections or to have the Congress in their power. I already know that part, but at the same time, in Venezuela, for example, they are not majority, and they did a coup. They they they've been trying to to uh, like a regime change uh, oh, in, since in Venezuela since 1999. Yeah, um, this yeah. kind this attempt to coup in 2002. So they don't need to be majority to win something and to, to push an idea of regime change in this country. Also, they are supported by the oligarchy in this country. You know, it's, yeah. and they, there are so many the groups. Throughout the hemisphere. Yeah, and they're, they're connected with the oligarchy in Venezuela, in Colombia, in Honduras. I mean, this is not something new. But the problem is that these kind of speeches against the president who is considered a communist by, by them, just for them, because he's not. He's not <laughs> really sad great. about it. <laughs> like, yeah. hopefully, one day, he we're going to even sleep on the ground in their own tent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they were just a few in the main plaza of this country without that. I mean, there were tents in the yeah. main plaza because, as you said, they weren't sleeping there. But now there are more, and the, oh, it's they almost are... full now. Like, yeah, it's... we went. We were there on the twenty sixth, uh, the sixth anniversary of Ayotzinapa, and the uh, Sokolo was about half full. And then we visited a week ago. Two weeks. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Or so more ago, and it was like three quarters full. So yeah. it's a growing statement and sentiment. One of the things that you mentioned was with, you know, the power of Morena inside the government. And the thing to be concerned about is that now that the more progressive party is in power with a majority, what do you do with that? You can, you know, is, is the party lax now that they actually hold power? Is that your concern that they're in office now, they hold power, and there's not that attention to mobilizing community that this at the street level keeping that base motivated and pushing yeah i would i think uh, something i remember all the time is what happened in bolivia or in ecuador or, or even in venezuela when a progressive movement uh, wins uh, the the election, the presidential election, it is normal to see these leaders, union leaders, activists who were in the streets now being part of the government. The problem was 
uh, or is nowadays here in Mexico, that the streets are empty and they're taken by the opposition. Now the people who were in the street, the, like us, we were, were, now most of them are, are in the government doing nothing. And the party now they're been fighting for for the intern power uh, yeah. of the of the main party of this country and of Latin America, there are millions in the, in this party. It's one of the biggest parties in, in the whole continent. Um, now they they've been fighting again against, against each other with so much immature, and they're not looking uh, what happened in in Latin America for the last twenty years at least. So the opposition is taking advantage of that. The party is not in the central debate. Yeah, and way. yeah no, so now we're, we, we will have new leaders of the party. Uh, we expect that they really consider the role, the real role of a party being the, the right, the, the movement. Yeah, the movement. the movement behind it. Yeah, the, and they need to be to, like, to the left of the president. That's the role of a party. So they haven't been organized for the last two years. They've been fighting against each other. So that's why the opposition is taking advantage. And now with this campaign that we did during the last month, uh, that's something that reactivate a lot of the, uh, the of that movement that make, made possible uh, for AMO to take uh, power. So now we are seeing um, next year our elections in this country, middle term elections. So. That's why we, we, we see that during the next month, we will have now uh, several mobilizations, or that's what I hope, that the party, uh, Morena, realizes that this is something huge, that these kind of speeches in the main plaza of this country is now, uh, is now listened by the middle class of this country. At the beginning, there were only, like in Venezuela, just white uh, upper class people in, 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 the, in, the, in downtown. And now you can see that there, there are a lot of people who are part of the middle class who really believe what the media is saying, what these people are saying. So that's really dangerous. Yeah. When this yeah. speech is co-opted and caught, a lot of these kind of people, it's not any, it's not a joke anymore. And that's, that's the no, reaction it's, it's of the government. gradual erosion. Yeah, and they're yeah. like yeah. laughing all the time. So look at that. They are not even sleeping in their tents. It's like, that's not the issue. No, the issue is that they're growing. The tent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The message is the tent, not whether they're, they're occupying. Right. In the same they're place that the, 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 the former governments, the past governments, uh, we, we've been repressed so many times in that class. Uh, you know, we took thousands <laughs> of lives. controlled by the, by the by fascists, the right you know, with these fascist <laughs> speeches. Yeah, it's like, really, are we, and also, the, I need to say, it, a lot of the people who I talk to in downtown, they're really pissed just to see those kind of people yeah now sleeping in the main plaza who as i said it took several lives of so many people who have been fighting for democracy in this country and now they're like you know but it is an issue of freedom of speech as well they do have that right to yeah the to problem is that they express their dissatisfaction with the government yeah i agree but the point is that they are not the yeah, yeah they're not looking for a democratic way of uh, push their their idea, ideas right they're calling for, they, and they've been saying it, people of them are saying that they would uh, burn alive people of Morena if there was the uh, Inquisition. And, you know, it's not a joke. People well, have been seen born the in Venezuela, in Nicaragua, it's in the, the last few years. So now. it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's more than freedom of, of speech. That threat of, for our listeners, viewers, that threat of, um, that verbal threat of burning people alive is not is reality yeah. <laughs> in countries, um, and we've seen it in recent years in Venezuela and Nicaragua both. So it's it's not simply a threat; it's a real fear. Yeah, and, and it has been carried out by. You know, there's a. Let's talk about a couple of things with party politics specific, because I think sometimes the notion um, in the United States, North America. Um, regarding Morena is that it's progressive, the president is progressive, there's this huge potential new wave of uh, a new paradigm for Mexico. 
But one of the things you and I have talked about um, a number of times in the past is a concern is that Partido Morena is going to end up very much like uh, Correa's Alianza de Paz in Ecuador, where you're, the party is basically an electoral platform and not a movement of political expression to basically be the wings beneath the government. Yeah, Morena, Morena nowadays is just an electoral platform. Uh, it was created four years ago looking, uh, well, AMLO decided to not to be a movement anymore and he decided to take power through a political party. That's how they created Morena and they left the, the other party was PRD, Partido Revolucionario Democrático, like Democratic Revolutionary Party, that it become just another party in this mm -hmm. country and that's why AMLO said no not anymore. We can be a new expression of democracy in this country. So that's why they created, with the help and support of the social movements, with the, the teachers, with the students, with so many people who were fighting for democracy in Mexico for many decades. So it happened that they won the elections. There is no doubt about how AMLO was elected democratically by 30 million of Mexicans in this country. So it was amazing. Yeah. Uh, the, at the first moment, really, really I couldn't exciting. even believe it. You know, I was I was shocked. I think because, a lot of people in, in, on the continent. Could. Yeah, he has been participating since 2006 for being president. And in 2018, he won and we were like, now what? <laughs> you know? But at the same time, it wasn't the same AMLO as he used to be in 2006. Yeah. That's really important to know because he was so, uh, uh, like the real leader of every social movement. But by 2018, he decided to make alliances with the oligarchy in this country. So that's why really he won. Yeah. So it's part of the nature of the contradictions of Morena at this moment that you are seeing that you are a popular progressive uh, movement, party, government, and at the same time you are uh, defending, you are making so many alliances with the whole oligarchy in this country. So you have in national powers the same people who were the leaders of the unions, of the movements, but you have the oligarchy. And of course, that you by the end, you won't yeah, have a, a progressive result, you agree? So it's part of the contradictions. And the point is that the party has been so weak for the last two years that of course the oligarchs are gonna be winning in so many issues. The people are not anymore in the streets. They are not pushing a more progressive uh, movement. They are also tired and they've been looking how to do it, but AMLO, uh, he's not a socialist, he's not an anti-capitalist, anti-imperialist, no, he's a nationalist. Nationalist. He has been uh, like a, a leader, of course, he's not part of the elites of this country, but at the same time, if you don't have a progressive movement in the streets, of course you won't take a, a real leftist uh, decisions. This is the thing that I wonder in our last few minutes of our conversation, we could take what you've said and, and look, you know, at the, at the US elections in November, because so many of us progressives in the States have been loath to jump on the Biden bandwagon with the Democratic party where so many of us really looked at Bernie Sanders to be that progressive right you know not a socialist he's not he isn't a socialist not a leftist but for progressive ideas and uh, and a more progressive uh, yeah. economy that ben that benefits you know working people everyone and and so this is one of the things we see in the states where okay everybody get behind Biden we want to get the democrats back in office but what happens with progressives who join that if there is not a movement outside the party on the ground in no. community organized and pushing as as all of you young people here in Mexico discovered when you went out those 15 days to have the petition sign all of a sudden you know no there's people begging for yeah. organizing and yeah. for pushing and I think there's a lot of parallels to that right now in the States. 
we don't as progressive have that outside social movement, political movement, labor movement base in community to really push the Democrats should they regain the White House. Yeah, well, here we need to say that also the narratives are trying to say that the whole opposition to this government is just the people who are in downtown, and they're not. In uh, other hand, you have social movements defending their territory, defending life, who are not really like the opposition of AMLO. They've been there for so many decades. So we cannot say there are movements against AMLO or the so-called for transformation, like Cuatro T, you know? They're not. They've been there for so many years. They've been fighting. And also, for example, there are so many, as I said, contradictions because AMLO, for example, in one of these uh, in states in Morelos, he, he said during his campaign that he will stop the uh, thermoelectric uh, plant uh, for energy, you know? Uh, so he said that he would stop it and he promised to do it, and by the end, he, he continued. Happen. So, you know, these are people who voted for him. Yeah. These are people who voted for him, who don't really, I, I don't consider them like the opposition. They're just against this system. Yeah. They're anti-capitalists like the SZLN and the Zapatistas, you know, this is not a movement against some. They've been there for so many years. So now those, those movements were just uh, blocked in the, in the media because they have powerful speeches, they have powerful narratives, and they were like, no, they don't matter, they doesn't matter, because at, at the end, these corporate media are defending the interests of the oligarchs. So of course they're not gonna show that. They're gonna show the oligarchs who are really pissed, who are in downtown, saying we're gonna burn people of Morena in this country. So there are so many movements. My, I'm really scared that this government doesn't listen to the real movements who've been taking the street for so many years and the people who are legitimate in these movements uh, become part of this neo-Nazi fascist uh, movement who is growing each day in this country. And we've seen it in, in Ecuador, for example, yeah. this uh, in Bolivia. In Bolivia, mm -hmm. the people who are defending the their territory. Yeah, the people who are defending the territory, they're not against the government. But if the government does, don't, uh, doesn't listen to these people, of course they're going to become <laughs> a part of the opposition, you know? So I think we're seeing these kind of contradictions every single day. Uh, and I need to say again, yeah, I really consider that this is the best president that we've ever had for the last 50 years or more in this country, but it is not enough. It is not enough considering that we had these kind of experiences in the rest of Latin America for the last 20 years. And we need to see what consequences it had. Like and not wait. Yeah. And not wait, but to be proactive. Yeah, and that's where that movement And organize, yeah. and if you want to support AMLO, do it. But at the same time, it's like AMLO is not enough. Social democracy is not enough in this moment of the history in the world. It is not enough. So we need to solve those kind of contradictions inside and outside the government uh, so we can push to uh, a leftist, uh, you know, organization, movement, but we need to take the streets, we need to push pressure. In, there are so many allies, you know, it's not like, oh, we are alone in the streets and we are the only radical movement. No, it's like now there are so many people who I really appreciate their job, their work in, in the government. So I think this is the opportunity. I see it as, a, as an opportunity to go to the left in this country and to support the leftist movements in the rest of Latin America. And in the US, of course. <laughs> Yeah. Well, our viewers aren't maybe necessarily going to like us to go too far <laughs> to the left in, in the United States, but it's but it is a matter of degree, right? Yeah. And you know, to become more progressive, the government needs to be pushed from the community level up, but also the government needs to know it has the support of a wide percentage of the population, which will help it move. So you you need 
the people, the Morena party, and I would say the progressives in the states, in the government, and then you need the movement on the ground mm -hmm. to reinforce that support, but also keep pushing. And I think as we close this conversation, that that is really what progressives need to be doing in the states as well, and not just vote for a democratic um, executive, but to be organized and pushing so that yeah, I've been saying get compromised. I've been saying this for the last month, every single day, when since we started the campaign against the former president. This is a campaign that even we we couldn't have done it. Amlo could have done it without any campaign, uh, without any, with, without any signature. But at the end, he decided to do another petition mm -hmm. when he saw that he, he had, had the support. support. Yeah. So that's like the, the, the example, the perfect example to say, of course, maybe Amlo is trying to insult communism or something, <laughs> but if he doesn't see anything in the streets, if he, he yeah. believes that he's alone, and I mean, democracy is not only going to vote, and I said this to so many generations, you know, for, from the youngest to the oldest, it's like, Democracy didn't start last uh, 2018, July of, uh, 2018 when he won. It's something that we build every single day. It's not enough with voting. It's not enough yeah. with collecting signatures. It's a day we need to day. organize yeah. in every single place that we have. Yeah. In the schools, in the fabrics, in the, in the neighborhood. And it's not only like something really idealistic. It's something that it works. Yeah. It works. You can't, you can't simply change politics by voting. There has to be that movement behind the vote. Yeah, and, I, and I, I think now that I'm thinking of the US, it's something that happened with Bernie Sanders. Yeah. You know, that the conversation turned to the left with, with a movement, a mass movement like he had uh, it last, during the last months. So I think it's something possible, something that we are obligated to do it's not only like oh we should do it like no we have to do it we should go vote and occupy every single space that we can for these kind of discussions and not just let even our congressmen or people who decide for us it's like no we need to be sure that they're listening to us but also that we are building something else something different and yeah. i think here in mexico it's the opportunity to go to the left even when i'm low, he doesn't have like real progressive politics for example towards feminism he's really conservative but at the same point there are so many feminists in the government who are pushing to the left these narratives these organizations these uh, public politics you know so it's something possible and i think in mexico we have now the opportunity and I think for the next month, something is going to happen for, for good, uh, considering that next year we have midterm elections. Well, let's have another conversation yes! about the midterm <laughs> elections. And let's have a conversation after um, the US elections in November. And I yeah. think there's a lot of good comparing and contrasting we can do, um, particularly with movement building in yeah. the states, depending on, on uh, on who wins on November 6th. And it's the movement building with social, the labor, the educators, as you say, every space. Yeah, how to give the face? government, to push the government if it's not exactly where you want it to be, but also to reaffirm that the government has your support. It's a two way, it's a two way street. Definitely. Two -way. Thank yeah. you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. This was great. <laughs> this is a really fun format and, and different, for, different for us and different for our viewers. And so I hope you join us again. Yeah. Um, next week, we air um, What the F is Going On in Latin America every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on Code Pink YouTube. And also, don't forget to catch Code Pink Radio on WBAI, WPFW every Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next week. <laughs>